You feel terrible, but your doctor tells you you're normal. Should you just ignore those thyroid symptoms of hair loss, weak skin and nails, constipation, brain fog, weight gain, and cold hands and feet? Or should you push on because you know there is something wrong with your thyroid, regardless of what your doctor says, even though your thyroid panel was normal? This is what I want to address today because this is a very common occurrence in clinical practice and there are multiple reasons why this occurs. And if you as the consumer understand this, then you know what kind of testing to ask for and can better tease out what's really going on in your case and return to a life at Optimal. I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. So why do you feel so bad even though your thyroid hormone testing is normal? Has your thyroid hormone testing been complete and thorough? Or has it been what standard of care thyroid testing is? The probability is that if you've seen a conventional medical doctor, you've only had standard of care testing. And under standard of care and conventional medicine, a quote unquote thyroid panel is one or two markers typically. It is typically thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH and sometimes they will also test a free T4. That is usually the extent of the thyroid panel done in a GP's office. So if you come in complaining of thyroid symptoms like the ones listed earlier in the video weight gain, brain fog, maybe some depression, constipation, hair, skin, and nail symptoms, cold hands and feet. It doesn't have to be all of those. could be a combination of some of those. But you've Googled and you found, oh, those are thyroid symptoms. Doc, test my thyroid. They typically test these and say, hey, those are normal. You don't have a thyroid problem. Meanwhile, you leave the office saying, well, I'm feeling the same symptoms. I think I do have a thyroid problem. So where's the disconnect? The disconnect is that standard of care is substandard in terms of thyroid hormone testing. This is one to two ninths of a full thyroid panel. A full thyroid panel, as I've discussed in previous videos, is nine markers. This is just looking at one small part of the thyroid. The problem is the metabolically active form of thyroid hormone is T3, so quick. In the conventional thyroid panel, where's T3? I don't see it. So how can we say your thyroid's normal? How can we say that the cells of your body are receiving thyroid hormone and creating the metabolic response that's triggered by thyroid hormone if we don't know your T3 levels and don't have any indication of if your cells are receiving thyroid stimulus or not? We need to test T3 and in reality, test all nine markers to be able to definitively say, ma'am or sir, your thyroid truly is normal, or hey, there is something wrong. So even though your TSH and free T4 are normal, yes, the doctor can say you don't have hypothyroidism as, as determined by conventional medicine diagnostic criteria, but that doesn't mean your thyroid is normal. There are many studies in the research that propose a model of what's called non-thyroidal illness syndrome, also called euthyroid 6 syndrome, also called low T3 syndrome. And as you can tell by the last name, low T3 syndrome, this is a model of thyroid dysfunction all about T3. And if we're not testing for T3 in conventional practice, we're not going to see this issue. And so people will go on suffering from a problem that hasn't been checked. Low T3 syndrome, because T3 is a metabolically active form of thyroid hormone, if you're low in T3, you can have these thyroid symptoms because the cells are not receiving thyroid stimulus. So what we would need to test at minimum, in addition to this, would be free T3 and reverse T3. So free T3 is a metabolically active form of the hormone 
Reverse T3 you could picture as free T3's evil twin. So reverse T3 blocks free T3's ability to bind the cellular receptor and create a thyroid response in whichever cell we're talking about, whether that's a brain cell, brain fog, depression, anxiety, a heart cell, heart palpitations or heart rate changes, a GI cell, constipation, a hair cell, hair loss, etc., etc. Now, another issue is thyroid function, okay? So, the thyroid gland, 93% of what it makes is T4. Now, T4 then has to enter your body and in the periphery be converted to T3 so that it can bind the cell receptors and have its impact. How does that conversion happen? Well, there are three enzymes called diiodinase enzymes in the body, and they are D1, D2, and D3. And these enzymes are selenium dependent, so if you're deficient in selenium, the conversion of T4 to T3 may not happen well, and you may have thyroid symptoms. D1 and D2, they function to convert T4 to T3. And a large amount of that, although it's happening in every cell and tissue in the body, a large amount of it occurs at the level of the gut and the liver. D3 inactivates T4 and T3. So it'll inactivate those and it increases reverse T3. So if diiodinase 3 activity goes up, then you have more reverse T3, which is, may outcompete free T3 for cell receptor binding and decrease thyroid response, increasing your low T3 syndrome symptoms or making your cells feel hypothyroid. So what causes decrease in D1 and D2 activity and increase in D3 activity? Good question. I'm glad you're thinking that. Well, if, if we have inflammation and or oxidative stress, those are going to lead to a decrease in D1 and D2. The same things, inflammation and oxidative stress, especially from ischemia, so poor blood flow, and hypoxia, poor oxygenation, are going to increase D3. The take home is that inflammation is going to skew how the diiodinases function, skew your ability to convert T4 to T3, increase the probability that you have low T3 syndrome or non-thyroidal illness syndrome. Much of this study has been done in the research on critical care in the ICU, but there has been forays into ambulatory care or everyday care, people walking around. And what the research says is that many people with ambulatory illness or many people with chronic disease, we could say, like autoimmunity, are walking around with systemic inflammation going on and high levels of oxidative stress. Well, look at that. Those are involved in skewing the conversion. So perhaps your thyroid symptoms are due to inflammation from other things going on in your body, and this now implicates the rest of your physiology in terms of we need to put the pieces together of your whole puzzle to see why you're having thyroid symptoms. Because you may not be diagnostic hypothyroid, but you may have non-thyroidal illness or low T3 syndrome because of oxidative stress and inflammation from other disease processes, poor lifestyle choices, etc., etc. So the key to figuring out why do I feel terrible even though my thyroid is normal is A, maybe your thyroid isn't normal, they haven't done a complete test yet, and B, Maybe your thyroid isn't normal because of other things going on in the periphery in the gut and liver or other tissues that are driving up inflammation, driving up oxidative stress, changing diiodinase function to decrease conversion and increase reverse T3 and preventing your cells from getting the thyroid stimulus they need to make you feel good. So if this makes sense to you, if this is your aha moment, then 
Functional medicine is likely to benefit you greatly. This is the detective work and the puzzle piece, putting together the puzzle making that I do every day and I'm passionate about. And I work with people like this all the time to help them return to a life at Optimal. I'd be happy to partner with you. You can reach out at www.functionalmedicinecharlotte.com.